This is an A590 hard drive plus for the Amiga 500. I bought this off of eBay for about 80 bucks, including shipping, and it's in very, very, very poor condition, as you can see. It's very dirty and yeah. So to check if this has any life in it, which I don't really know, let's open it up and take a look inside. So there are four arrows pointing to the corner screws. So I will for now just take out these screws and maybe this will open this baby up. I assume these screws just hold in the PCB or the hard drive. Just want to get the cover off so that I can at least clean this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Guess we have a winner. This is a Western Digital. And it's a fat, fat, fat hard drive. So there's a fan in there. Just mount it here. And this switch seems to switch on and off the fan, I guess. You have to desolder that to get the, the cover off. And we can pull this cable right here, but we have to desolder the switch cable. So this thing is really heavy. We have a SCSI drive connector here. By the way, the lower part is metal and just the top cover is plastic. Okay. And it says XT drive. It uses 12 volts and 5 volts and uh, it looks like these screws on the bottom hold this in place. So we have to unscrew this to get to the bottom of it. Haha. <laughs> and you can switch between the XT and the SCSI by just switching the jumper here. Okay, since I don't even know if this works. My plan is to clean this because there's some debris and stuff in here. Just plug it into an Amiga and see what it does before completely disassembling this. But I have to at least give this here a very good clean. Good, so let me try to clean this mess. So after 15 minutes of hardest possible scrubbing, this is what's left. And it looks a million times better without the stickers. You can still see where the sticker was. And it's very uneven yellowed. But it looks good. Looks good enough, let's say that. Could it be that there's still the protective foil on this? I guess there is. Awesome. So that at least is brand new. Nice. Okay. And even the foil is a little yellowed. Okay, we've reached the part of the video where I have to build a power supply for this thing. And this does use a four pin DIN connector. And I'm not sure that I have one. I have power supply for 1541-2, which has a 4-pin connector. Let's see if this fits. Yeah, it fits. Okay. So this is actually the same connector as the one on the 1541-2 power supply, but don't use this, please, because it's only rated for 1 amp and 0 0.5 amps on the 12 volt line, so that should be a little too low. So pin out wise, um, pin one is five volts. Yeah, 
so the pinout isn't correct. So even if you could use this, the pinout would be wrong. So you would have to um, rewire this. We have the Amiga power supply, which in this case, which is a light version, the A500 power supply supplies 4.5 amps on the 5 volts line and 1 amp on the 12 volts line. And it does even provide minus 12, which we don't use. So we only need, according to this schematic here, plus 12 on this pin and plus 5 on the other. Hmm. So we could use this power supply, but the connector doesn't fit. So we could theoretically build a power supply with this power supply and the connector from the 1541-2 uh, power supply. But I also have this. And this is a power brick which came with a lacy, guess it was a, it was a hard disk an external hard disk and this provides 5 volts 2 amps and 12 volts 2.2 amps so this is pretty much perfect but again the connector is wrong and I will use this because this is much more compact than this and it's even rated higher at least on the 12 volts line I have connectors here and this package doesn't say which connectors these are so let's open these up and take a look inside. I oh, know these are eight pin connectors. I have no idea what, what I bought these for. These won't fit and I have a whole box of connectors here. So I do have quite some connectors here and my... oh look at that. I think I even have a four pin connector that fits. Let's see. Yeah, fits perfectly. Nice. Oh, so I don't have to kill my power supply for the 1541-2. That is awesome. Before we go and build the power supply, I have some technical information about this device. So this is a SCSI and XT IDE controller with DMA, which stands for Direct Memory Access. And it houses a Western Digital 33C93. And you can use SCSI and XTIDE at the same time. It has an auto boot ROM, but it needs Kickstart 1.3 for that. It has an on off switch for auto boot. So this wires here are for the auto boot on off. And um, the second switch was for the fan. It supports RDB and it has a timeout switch for drives that need longer than 30 seconds to um, boot. It has an internal 15 pin SCSI um, connector and a 40 pin XDIE connector, which is just 8 bit. And it does have an external 25 pin SCSI connector, which is nice because you can actually add a CD ROM drive or stuff like that, theoretically. And you can use it in Linux. But the main fun is that this thing is also a memory expansion and we have to take this whole thing out of here. There are two screws um, and I assume these screws also hold this all in place and we will take a look at the memory expansion which is down there and it uses dip memory 256k by 4 which have a access time of 120 nanoseconds or less and you can add a half or a Mac or two Macs of RAM. You can only install one drive as you can see um, and you have this jumper to actually select if you do SCSI or XDIDE. This thing gets plugged into the Amiga on the side port and it's, uh, it's the only thing you can plug in because there's no second port here. And it needs a power supply, which we are going to build. Now, how do we know which cable is which? Hmm. It actually says here, but that's not of much help. Oh, we have two ground wires, which is good. So we could at least check if we have continuity on two pins, and that would make these oh, on two cables if I cut this. That would make these the ground cables and then we have 5 volts and 12 volts and can measure that if we plug this in. And I will cut it right here so that I have some cable left 
if I ever need this again. Like. Okay, that didn't work too well. There's only two lines and there's the, the ground is also the shielding. So that's good because now we know that these two have to be the power cables. And now we have to measure and connect. So I grabbed some Mickey Mouse cable. Let's plug this in. And let's get measuring. Here's a multimeter. Put this on 20, that should be plenty. Oh See what I did there? And we have ground and we have oh so red is 12 volts and it seems white is 5 volts so the good thing is this is the outside of the uh, a590 and if you put the plug in there the back side of the connector is just like that so we have to put the red cable on the top left the white cable on the top right and the ground cable on the bottom right. We have to put some solder and some, in German it's Lötfett, onto the connectors. Back in the day when I started soldering I always put, uh, tried not to put solder in here because I wanted to put the cable in and, and then solder and that was much much harder. So best way to do connectors is put some Lötfett on it um, the solder grease and then put some solder on it and do the same for the cable and then you just put on the cable and touch the ca hot the cable with the hot iron and it will melt into the connector and that is the way to do it this and it's the best way I know to do this and the easiest so if you're ever soldering connectors make sure to do it this way also if you're soldering these plastic connectors, never ever put the clamp here. Because the moment these get hot, these will um, these will go together and melt the plastic. So if you do this, always do it like this, so that you have a parallel connection to this. And uh, don't squeeze these together. So, of course, the camera stopped working and uh, I have no idea where. But we have a power supply with a 4-pin connector, which is measured and works. This is the old connector. And now I'm going to disassemble this a little further to take a look at the memory that's inside and that should show up on the Amiga. Okay, so I have to take this. Okay, there we have it, the party mix A590 and it does come with what seems to be one meg of RAM and we could put another meg up here if we had the right chips and I guess I have the right chips for that, but these are inside of my A500 Plus board, which I just soldered together, still missing some parts. You have to configure the memory here, and it's configured for a Mac. So let's put this back together, and let's see if this hard disk has still some life inside of it. By the way, you could, of course, do the power mod, which just connects the power rail coming from the connector here, from the Amiga connector, to the connector here. Um, but I don't trust that because we just have a standard power supply and I'm not sure if it can take um, all the um, current or amperage that this here needs. It says 0.8 and 0.6 amps but you never know okay I think we are good for a test and I will just connect these wires so that we get the auto boot like this 
and we will need an Amiga, preferably with a Kickstart 1.3 or later. And I have my newly minted A500 Plus, which I made out of a standard Amiga 500. So let's take that one. Okay, so to use this hard drive, we have to remove this door on the side here, because here's the connector. And I actually never ever did use this connector. So let's see how that goes. And it's in. Let's plug this in. And there is a light, which I guess is good. So if there has ever been an auto boot, this Amiga is just giving me a white screen. Let's maybe try to connect the fan. I have no idea if this changes anything. So the fan starts. And it's very loud. I get a kickstart screen this time. So it's either a dead drive or it's just not initialized. Okay, welcome to Retro Hell. Um, as you can hear, this fan is going quite noisy. The hard disk is, at least it says so, formatting after I created this uh, A590 setup disk, which took me about uh, an hour using my grease weasel. And uh, yeah, let's see. It says it could take up to half an hour to format or low level format the drive because the drive couldn't be found. I just started from scratch. And it's doing something. It's ticking away. I'm just not sure if it's really low level formatting the drive or whatever. Yeah, so I let this run for a while and we will see. Yeah, so the blinking stopped, the green light is off, it beeped, beep, 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 beep. And then it gave me attempting to prep the hard disk failed. Check your hardware and try again. Error minus one on writing. Hmm, that's not good. So I guess we can assume that the disk is dead. And uh, I have, I believe, a spare SCSI hard drive somewhere. And maybe we try the SCSI port instead. Okay, so it's a few weeks since we had a look at this here. Well, I had a look at this for you, it's just a second. And I was trying to get a SCSI drive for this because these uh, XT IDE drives, these XT IDE drives are pretty hard to get and they will fail sooner or later. So. I thought this thing has a SCSI port over here, 50 pin, so I should just get a SCSI drive. But if you go on eBay and check the prices for these SCSI drives, you will soon see that these cost about 100 euros. And I'm not willing to spend that kind of money on a hard drive that will also eventually fail. So I thought this thing has an external SCSI bus on the back side. So theoretically we should be able to put any SCSI drive here and uh, take the hard disk out of this and just use the external drive as the main drive. And I went on eBay again and I found something that's rather unusual in this situation, which is not your standard SCSI drive, but an iOmega JES drive. And these come with these changeable media, which are a gigabyte. And these are pretty much swappable hard drives. And I thought, oh, this is a SCSI JAS drive and they are also SCSI zip drives. So this might even work with a much cheaper zip drive and zip media. Why not connect that SCSI drive to 
that A590 and see if we can make this work. So this is now connected. There's the A590, there's the jazz drive. I still have this hard drive attached, this XT IDE hard drive, um, both to power and to data, because without that, this thing will fail. It will not do anything. Yeah, I will just leave it like this, but, uh, wait, that's one thing. There's a jumper down here, and I switched that from XT IDE to SCSI. So this is now using the SCSI port internal and external. Internal, there's not a drive connected, so it's using the external SCSI port. And on the JAS drive, you can also set the SCSI IDE, which I set to one. You see that here? And you have SCSI termination, and I set that to on. That's the very right position, uh, very left position. We could daisy chain more drives here, by the way. So this is quite the SCSI cable here. I will leave the uh, airflow a little going here for the fan. Okay, so the order in which we start this up is we start up the jazz drive. We put in some media and there are both PC and Mac media, which doesn't really matter, I think, because these are just uh, pre-formatted for that specific platform, but we will reformat them so there's no I'm done here. Put one in and the drive starts flashing and rotating. It makes crazy noises. Okay, then we go and start up the A590. And the red light came on, no green light. And then we start the A500. And I'm booting from disk now. There's the um, installer disk for the A590. I'm using that. And it says invalid, invalid, invalid because there's no battery inside um, the memory expansion, which I have in here, down here in the trapdoor. You might be wondering, can that actually work? And I wasn't sure because this jazz drive is a very different generation from that drive down here. I guess this is SCSI 2, if I'm not completely mistaken, because it has the, the smaller SCSI port and that is SCSI Dinosaur, so the very first SCSI standard there was. So here we are, and we go to A590 setup. And we go to so none of these work. You can't use prep HD, you can't use format, you can't use install. All these will fail for now. You can't use install startup, you can't use make boot disk. Nothing works. The first thing you have to do is to go to drive definitions. And it's scanning all the available devices on SCSI and XTIDE. You can see it actually found a SCSI drive, but it's unknown. So you go to change drive type and it only offers you one. So for now I'm not going to define a new drive type. I, I'm sure you can do that because this only offers 19 megs of RAM. Uh, so 90 megabytes, uh, not of RAM, of uh, available space. But for now that's okay. So if you go to partition drive you can see there's a partition. And it says 19 megabytes and there's not more space here. And we will leave it to that because that's pretty much the standard size that A590 came with, I guess. And we say save changes to drive and we say exit. So nothing has changed. Let me quickly reboot this and then we come back. And now we have an MDH0 NDOS. And you just click once and you go to initialize. And it says, please insert disk to initialize and drive. Uh -huh. Say continue. Okay, to initialize. We are good. And then it tries 
to initialize 600 cylinders. And you can see it says MDH0 busy. And this again takes a while, just a few minutes. And as you can see, the jazz drive is happily flashing away. And it's not using, the A590 is not using the internal disk, it's using this disk. You can see they are completely in sync. So the great thing about this is, for the jazz drive, I think I paid 39 euros with six media discs. And as you can see, they at one point cost 209 D-Mark, which would be pretty much the same in Euro right now. And they are all one gigabyte. And yes, this is a very crazy setup. But what you can do is, you can actually have one hard disk for every type of OS you have. You can do a 1.3 workbench hard disk with all the 1.3 stuff on it. And if you switch your Kickstart to 3.1, you can just put in another media and have your 3.1 hard disk. Yeah, and there might actually be a way to um, get around this 90 megabyte barrier on the disk drive. So I haven't tr tried that. So if you're in for that. And also, I'm pretty sure you could use a, uh, a normal iOmega zip drive for that. I haven't tried that. But there are SCSI zip drives out there and they should work pretty much the same way. I'm relatively sure they are using the same controllers in here. It's a different type of media, but I think it's pretty much that. So it's happily crunching away. Not sure if this will be the first Amiga 500 with Kickstart 1.3, which boots from a jazz drive, but it pretty much could be. And we have an empty disk which we can open with the trash can inside, which is pretty cool. So now, how about we make this thing bootable? And now we can actually go and say install HD. Hard disk cannot be found. So we cannot actually go and <laughs> do that. But if we go here and we go to rename and we call it DH0, maybe that changes anything. Let's see. Empty is a stupid name. And look at that. Just by renaming this, and that is this is pure coincidence, because I didn't want to have a hard disk that was called empty. I just renamed it to DH0, and then this worked. So this is a totally crazy, crazy uh, coincidence that I renamed this to DH0, and that is exactly what this program needed. And it says setting up RAM disk, and it asks you to insert oh, um, a workbench. 1.3 and an Extras 1.3, which are both from the Amiga 3000. And yes, the Amiga 3000 came with 1.3 Workbench. And it says there Workbench, so let's put that in. And it copies all the stuff to the RAM disk, and then it copies all the stuff over to the dress drive. And you can see, dress drive is happily accepting stuff. And by the way, I never had an Amiga 3000. I learned to program C in one night on an Amiga 3000. Um, but I bought a real huge box of Amiga 3000 software and stuff from a guy who had an Amiga 3000, didn't want it, for 10 euros. And there was software in for thousands. And I sold mo most of that on eBay to get more machines. And that was one of the craziest deals I have ever made was just uh, 15 minutes away from me. So the deal was pick the box up uh, in one hour and pay 10 euros. And you can have it all for 10 euros. But that was a crazy, crazy deal. Yeah, and there were also the workbench and 
the 3000 kickstart disc and all the stuff in there which i kept and i sold all the software page stream and i don't know must have uh, belonged to a guy who was really into cad and um, all the dtp stuff he had so much software as i said i sold that for thousands of euros on ebay and i bought some pretty nice machines for that yeah that takes quite a while and now it wants the extras disc and it should get the extras disc so this is such a, such a crazy setup didn't think i could get this to work this was purely on a hunch that if there's a SCSI port on that A590 you could probably use some external device like a CD-ROM or stuff like that but that a jazz drive would work I wouldn't have thought of that and that DH0 thing here is complete craziness I mean you could theoretically copy this by hand and make it work Oh, now it's uh, setting up icons and the hard drive is going crazy. And it's complete. So let's check this out. And there's all the stuff on the jazz drive. Now let's eject the disk, do a reset. That's unexpected. It's not booting. Why is it not booting? So this A590 is a bit fiddly about how it's placed on the Amiga 500. So let me just reseat that. So I did restart everything. Let's see what the Amiga says. nope not booting that's crazy i had it booting so i did receipt the a590 again and now it actually boots so it was just the a590 not sitting right on the amiga i was scared there for a minute so that is the prepared which i did before my prepared medium you can see all is here and that is the one we just made so let's put that back in there and let me show you that that also boots let's see if it does actually boot yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, it's loading. From the jazz drive. So that is the one we just created. It's also called DH0 and Amiga. But here it is. Booting an A500 via an A590 from an iOmega jazz drive, which is for me totally amazing yeah i guess we could actually install monkey island or anything like this on these drives and have some uh, containment for adventure games but uh, yeah since i'm not willing to get a scuzzy drive for 100 euros maybe i find one someday but until then i will have this it's a crazy setup but it works and uh, yeah i have six of these just discs so yeah there's plenty of room and that concludes today's video thanks for watching and until next time bye bye thank you for watching retro is the new black if you're new to the channel please like and subscribe if you like the video please share every like share and comment helps a lot until next time bye bye